Hey everyone, this is Natalie Marie Collins and welcome to December's Writing Date Day. So today I have a very special guest with me. His name is Brian D. Johnson. Let me just tell you a little all about Brian. So he is the author. Um, he's an author of this book and several more, but we're going to be talking about this book today. He's a serial entrepreneur who is also an engaging speaker, product creator, number one best-selling author, nurturing mentor, passionate poodle wrangler, and since 2008, Brian has coached tens of thousands of wealth seekers, who, many who have successfully generated life-changing income. Brian's high energy and zest for life translate well to his coaching programs, where he breaks down the most important elements of many profitable online business traffic and conversions. His formulas are simple, his rituals are effective, and his techniques are easy to follow. So Brian, welcome. I am so excited to have you on today. And we have a little bit of a background history together, and I want to um, tell our audience a little bit about that and how we met. And welcome. As you're <laughs> Well, this is going to be a whole lot of fun. I can, I can feel it. We're going to have a ball. Yes. <laughs> so, so Brian, you and I met while doing a book called So What Do You Do? Um, That's true. Yes, which was a lot of fun. We're actually in the middle of a second book called JV Zoo Rockstars, which is another fun one that I'm excited for everybody to do. But it's kind of a secret. Um, nobody really <laughs> knows about it except for the JV Zoo crowd, so I'm kind of spilling like the beans a, a little bit. <laughs> a double secret Super secret probation. Like probation. if we say anything about it, we'll be stuck on probation. <laughs> so keep it keep it sealed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, when I saw you at Marketing Mayhem um, a couple of months ago, you gave me a copy of your Trust Funnel book signed with pixie yeah. dust all over it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I love it. Thank you for this. And so I want to I want to talk a little bit about um, what's in the book. Okay, what's in the book? Well, the book originally, I was thinking, yeah, okay. So so what's interesting, Natalie, is is Trust Funnel was uh, conceived and born at JV Zoo. Oh. But it was it was conceived and born the previous year. I was asked to speak. And I wanted to put out a presentation that I felt really got to the heart of what's important. I mean, we're, we're all here to get results. And, and honestly, I, I oftentimes see a lot of people, and they're so focused on the technology and the whiz-bang and, and just looking for the one thing that can help them to succeed. And at the end of the day, I think really what – is, is central to success is really connecting with people mm -hmm. and grabbing attention. You know, if we, I'll just grab one of my copies here. Says, let me see if I can get this up here. Says, uh, grab attention. So that's kind of the first step of the of the buying process is to, you know, you can't really get results if you don't have attention. But from that, it really moves through, you know. Uh, leveraging today's online currency to grab attention, drive and convert traffic, and live a fabulous, wealthy life. And, you know, I mentioned, like, grabbing uh, attention. And then, really, what you do is you turn that in uh, to what's most important, which is ultimately trust. And the way we get to trust is for people to know, like, and trust us. And when they do that, they're going to buy. And... And again, you know, some of the things I see is people looking outside of themselves for success. But if trust is central and, and critical, well, then obviously, you know, we need to focus on ourselves. We need to go out and connect with people. So I thought, you know, this is cool. And, and it really kind of goes back to Dale Carnegie, win friends, influence people. It goes back to Zig Ziglar and just these core concepts about human relationships, adding value, some of the stuff that's so cliche but yet so important. And I thought, how does that really apply today's, to today's internet, uh, what's the, 
kind of like here we call it the currency, right? Like how do we apply that to the, the internet marketing of today? So I came up with this 20 minute presentation and I talked about using pictures and coming up with your own brand and, and really when you do that you become your own asset. You know, people probably would be interested in some of the stuff I'd come out with uh, in, in the coming years because I've established myself as, as a brand and as a trusted source of information. So that's what the presentation was about. And then I just kept moving forward and it really resonated with people. People said, wow, that was great. You know, you had some technical details on like the kind of widgets to use in my sidebar and, and how to gain trust from cold traffic. And at the same time, you talked about the old school strategies, uh, Zig Ziglar, Carnegie, and so on. So I just I, I started moving forward with that, and I came back after that uh, event, and I started writing an ebook, and then I got with Joel Kahn, and he was really excited about what I was moving forward on, and he said, you know, I think you should just go all the way with this, and you know, do a physical book, and in doing so, you're going to have more impact. So Joel and I, we hung out for an afternoon. It was a great brainstorming session. I came back home and I, I spent about six or seven hours creating a massive outline and really what I came up with was the story of you know the 10 years that I've been full-time online and talking about how I built my brand, the mistakes I made, uh, the pitfalls that I experienced as well as the successes I've had and you know what we have now is we have the book trust one. So. It it is it's such a great book, and this information that you share in it um, really resonates with me as well. And it all goes back to you know building your audience that really adores you, and how to do that. And which is one of the things that I really really love because who doesn't want adoring fans in their life? <laughs> so exactly. absolutely. So you know it, it's. The technical breakdowns that you do within the book really help to make it more of a grounded, realistic point of view on on things that you can do, and it's not you know the airy fairy stuff that that can be thrown out there that we don't quite understand and how to do it. You give very um, grounded and respectable, useful, valuable information within it. So thank you for this. <laughs> Well, I, I really appreciate it, you know, and, and originally, like I said, it was going to be an ebook, and it was really kind of about Google and, like, coming out of, like, old school SEO and, like, snapping out of it and, like, you know, not focusing on the latest link bait or whatnot, but just building that brand, and, and I came home, and, and Joel had kind of put me on this path, and I needed a lot more content, and I thought, I just started creating this very in-depth table of contents, and I just worked my way through it day by day. And I am really pleased with the way the book came out, you know, and we've had a lot of early reviews. I've been sending the book out. It's gotten a lot of exposure. I'm, I'm very blessed, you know, already like 24 five-star reviews. And, and in mo I can't, I almost feel like I'm sticking my foot in my mouth. I don't want to go to too, down, <laughs> too far down the path because really I haven't even launched the book yet. At this point, it's almost like in book pre-launch, but it's very exciting. It's been very well received. And I tell you, come February 3rd, we're going to crush it. I'm very, very excited. So oh, so February 3rd is your official launch date? It is. I didn't see, I didn't even realize that you hadn't officially launched it yet. I thought. Um, no, no, we're, this is this is like the pre-pre-pre-launch. Wait till. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about your process and what um, and how you created your book. So one okay. of the things when I invited you to come on here is um, I explained what a writing date that was, and you instantly lit up with, oh, of course, that's that's what I do. I did throughout my whole entire book. So um, can you explain a little bit about what your day-to-day -day process looked like while you created the book? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, if you know, if I look at the table of contents here, and the reason I want to do it is just like you said, it's, it's right in here. And basically, like you know, there's an introduction. And then there's some stuff in, in chapter one as far as like why a lot of people fail. And I kind of call that uh, the rabbit hole in the red pill. And then in chapter two, I go into success philosophy and mindset. 
And in that chapter, I've got what I call the productivity ritual. And, you know, one of the things that's really important to, to get real with ourselves if we want the highest level of success is that it's really kind of made up in two parts. And that is part number one is that you've got to do stuff that people are excited about. You've got to produce. You've got to create. So, you know, this is a, a fairly thick book. It, it's like the, the original manuscript was 91,000 words. And I really just focused on it day in and day out. So I'd have that thing that people would want to access. And the other part of success is just doing what we're doing today, talking about um, networking with people, uh, using social media and whatnot. So when I sat down to create my book, I created the outline. And then, like I said, just to stay on focus, what I have is my productivity ritual. And again, it's in Chapter 2. And this is just, Chapter 2 is about all the stuff that I use to keep myself moving forward, getting great results, publishing great uh, information because at the end of the day that's what internet marketing is you know it's uh, a very big component not all of it but a very big digital uh, marketing is all about publishing so you know the productivity ritual allows me to focus on what's most important right now today and all I really worry about is really two to three hours four at the most and so all I did was I started off with a bullet point list of the table of contents. I didn't try to overcomplicate it. I didn't create a huge flow chart. I didn't go to base camp. All I needed to do was to sit down and put some freaking bullet points on a piece of paper. <laughs> you know? And then I go, okay, wow, that was pretty good. You know, and I, I met with Joel on a Friday and I did that the next day because I had decided that's what I was gonna do. And the next thing in front of me, well, I need to organize the content I'm going to create. And then the next day I started, and I started writing. Well, I need a, a, big, a bigger introduction. This is a physical book, and I didn't have that, so I started writing the introduction. And then I, every day, I just got started with my day, and basically from 9 a.m. until noon, that's my productivity ritual. And when the clock strikes 9, if I'm not working on what I know I need to, I'm, I'm kind of freaking out, I'm twitching a little bit, <laughs> and it keeps me going forward. And before you know it, you know, my publisher was yelling at me, please stop writing. The book's going to be too big. You know, we actually even uh, removed a chapter uh, from the book, and, and that'll be available when we launch in February. So that's basically, you know, the strategies I use to keep myself productive, to keep myself on track, and to keep myself moving forward day to day. Oh, I love it. So when you were doing your day-to-day -day ritual with stuff, did you write a lot in your home or did you get yourself out of your environment to change it up a little bit and become more focused? You know, I, I do great at home. I, I really do. I, I like kind of a structure to my day. I'll usually, you know, like I said, do the productive stuff, the most important, after a few hours. So I wake up early, maybe 6, I do coffee, I'm on Facebook, I'm doing a few emails, and then right at 9, I go straight to my office, I sit down, and I start hammering out what's most important. For, for eight to nine months, that was my book. And then I move forward. So I really like to work from home. It, it suits me well. Yes. I love working from home, and I also love heading over to the coffee shop because one of the funny things that I realized is um, sometimes we can get in a rut when we're at home. I don't know if this ever happens to you, but it'll happen to me. And so I'll go to the coffee shop, and it, a funny thing happens when um, there's a bunch of people around you is, to me, all of a sudden, they're all my accountability partners. <laughs> so I use that as, as a drive to help me stay focused in getting that done. But... Um, is that Otis I hear in the background? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> let me go. Let me go. I'm gonna go wrangle him. I'll be back in two seconds because he'll drive up both of us crazy. I'll be right back. <laughs> so the poodle wrangler is gonna go wrangle some poodles. I love it. <laughs> so, um, if you all are interested, Brian's book is called The Trust Funnel, and you can find it on Amazon. When we're done with this interview, I will put a link below in the blog post showing you how to get it, um, but his official 
uh, launch date is not until February, so this is a pre-copy or pre-version of the pre-version of the pre-launch, which is fantastic. <laughs> so, um, and if you guys have questions for Brian, um, you can type them in in the Q and A box, and we'll ask him at the end of the hangout. And I would love to get your guys' feedback on all of this stuff. And you know, just as we're going along, conversation, um, go ahead and, and type those questions in, and we'll get them for you. So, thank you for coming on. And how are you guys doing? Um, are you guys, you know, up and and on your writing date? Do you have Otis with you? Yeah, I have Otis and Olive now. So we just oh. got a baby puppy, so things are pretty crazy around here. <laughs> She's a cutie. Um, yeah, so what was I going to say? Yeah, so the book's coming out on the 3rd, and uh, there's going to be all kinds of extra bonus stuff as far as, as that goes. So people might want to hold off. Just oh. because if they, buy, if they buy the physical version, they'll get the Kindle version for free. They'll also get a, an extra case study that I've been working on and maybe some extra training as well. So all kinds of great extra extra free stuff happening on the 3rd of February. Wow. So I know, Brian, you focus a lot of doing the um, the online you know, internet marketing space, which mm -hmm. I love to play in as well. Um, so I love that you're actually almost branching out a little bit and creating a physical book because we're so um, used to playing in the, the digital space. And I do have um, somebody, his name is David Jorda. He's saying, saying, hello, Brian, what is the content of the book? Um, I'm assuming that David got on a little bit um, later, but if you wouldn't mind going through a little bit more of the content yeah, of the yeah. book. Absolutely. You know, we'll t we can talk about doing the physical book because I'd love to share a few tips and strategies with mm -hmm. people. Um, and, and first, I, I want to address your, you kind of mentioned, you know, you did the book. And the reason I did the book, Natalie, was because, you know, I've been doing this since 2003. And I've done so many different things. eBay, AdSense, a WordPress, WordPress, SEO, video marketing, YouTube, product creation, um, uh, upsells, downsells, cross sales, coaching, coaching programs, uh, self publishing, self publishing Kindle coaching program that was last year, and you know Joel said physical book, and I'm like, well, I haven't done that, and that's one of the things that I see that really drives me is truly I'm a tinkerer. You know, one of the chapters like the subtitles is tinker, trainer, teacher, or something like that. <laughs> I just love to try new stuff, and, and that's why we went forward with the book. As far as, you know, what's in it, it's really about the core three most important critical elements that you'll find in any highly successful digital marketing lifestyle business. So first of all, let's qualify. What the heck is digital marketing? Well, it's really selling products and services via a brand uh, and whatnot. So, you know, you're a digital marketer. I'm a digital marketer. I sell information products, ebooks, all examples of digital media. I can sell an affiliate uh, product. I can leverage YouTube because, again, it's publishing using digital media and to sell. And what Trust Funnel does is it talks about those three core critical things, which is driving buyer traffic. Number two is building a list. And, you know, this is stuff that everybody talks about because it's the most important stuff, like I said. And number three is publishing assets. And the thing that I've really um, figured out, you know, after this book was done, I started putting together the next coaching program, and that'll be next year. And I thought, you know, simplify it. What is this, what is this thing really about? And it's about those three things. And if you really look at the most popular or the most successful digital marketers, they drive traffic, they build a list, and here's the thing that separates the wannabes from the super successful is assets. You know, it's not just I'm going to publish an authority blog or I'm going to create uh, an authority website or I'm going to create a book. You don't get to decide that you're creating an authority or a bestseller, best-selling book. 
It's the people that buy your stuff. They decide and they determine the quality of your information and the value you bring to the table. And I kind of mentioned this earlier. If you really focus and you try to go the extra mile, people will want to hear from you again and again, and that will help to build your brand. And people will be more interested in hearing what you have to say when you send the email, and you'll be able to kind of move forward. It's very synergistic. Very synergistic synergistic. <laughs> so so that's kind of a little bit about what the the book is about. And so like I said in the beginning I talk about, you know, how I got started. I talk about some pitfalls that lots of people have. Um, and then I go into mindset because I think you got to get your mind straight before you move forward. And then we go into, well, you better decide what niche market you're going to go into. Then I talk about branding and how to come up with a brand name and some strategies around that and good and bad examples. And then we go into launching a trust funnel, which is actually a WordPress site that's been optimized to build the list. Um, and then after you do that, we use some kind of conversion tactics to, uh, again, build a list. And then we go into Facebook to drive the traffic. And we go into self-publishing, again, to drive traffic. And I talk about simple stuff that, that works in, in Google. And uh, video marketing tactics, because again, you can publish a video and you can drive traffic. So that's kind of the big picture of Trust Fund. Wonderful. So one of the things that I feel that, that you've conveyed inside of Trust Funnel is you, know, you said that you've been doing this since um, 2003. And so obviously you've been doing it for quite a while and know a lot of the tried and true things that work and are not just gimmicky, you know, one time easy button type shots. Um, so I, that's one of the things that I love about what you've written in the book is um, is the more down-to-earth stuff that works. Yeah, and, and really, my whole thing is, is, is I kind of go to this buzz phrase, Natalie, and mm -hmm. it's path of least resistance. Like, we all want that. We all want to get the results as quickly as possible. But there's a, a, a point where if you push too far, you just kind of get into pure goofy, you know, <laughs> the kind of stuff. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. And when you're there you're in very dangerous territory. And the one thing I would share is, you know, if you're buying a product or service, is the person that created that product, are they doing what they're teaching and what they're selling? And if you, if you focus with that and you, and you, and you look for uh, products that are based on, you know, the vendor's actions and what they're doing and their experience, you know, you're going to go a lot further and, and whatnot. And at the same time, if you've done it long enough, you can start connecting the dots. You know, the reason I went to self-publishing wasn't so much about publishing a Kindle book, but I knew that I could rank on Google by publishing a, uh, a book to Kindle, and I knew once I had people reading a Kindle book, I could probably build a list, drive traffic. So it's really about, you know, trying to find that path of least resistance, find the easiest way to drive the traffic to make the money, but not go so far down the rabbit hole that you find yourself in shiny object syndrome. I call it the seven-minute syndrome, you know, just bouncing from one thing to the next. No, nope, I totally agree, and I think that, um, especially when you're first starting out in the online space, because um, I've experienced this too, is the bright, shiny object syndrome is very appealing and alluring and fun in its own way. So, <laughs> Well, um, you know, I think a big problem too, Natalie, is that people just, they're not sure. They don't know how to move forward, and it's like, you know, it was like that for me. But one of the things I'll kind of mention is that I kind of had this epiphany. Uh, I've had a few in the last 12 years that, you know, wow, it really shaped where I'm at today. And the first one was I kind of like woke up and I'm like, you know, I started messing around in 1999. And I didn't do much and I made a few dollars here and I wasn't too serious. But about 2002, I was like, I got really serious and I'm like, you know what? This internet thing is going to totally change the way people spend money. There's so much opportunity, and if you want to change your life, you better get serious. And I stopped, and I created a plan for myself. So I wasn't on people's mailing list. I stopped, and I said, how are you going to do it? You know. And I looked at all the methods. 
Um, now, there wasn't as many methods back then because there was no Facebook, there was no YouTube, there was no Twitter, there was no video marketing, etc. But today, in the same scenario, if I was faced with that, I'd say, okay, Brian, you know, how are you going to drive traffic to make the money? Do you want to do social media? Do you want to do video? Maybe you hate writing, so you're, you're willing to do video because you don't have to write to do video. Or maybe you're scared to death to go on video, but writing doesn't sound so bad. And when you stop and really ask yourself, what's the best solution for me, you can come up with a game plan and you can move forward. So for me, it was SEO and affiliate marketing. I didn't have a lot of money, I couldn't run ads, and I figured if I could drive traffic, I could then you know, take that skill and move forward and start selling products. And the first website I launched was actually a culinary website. I just I practiced SEO on things like homemade chicken noodle soup and shrimp scampi, and all of a sudden I started getting good at it and I had all this traffic, and then I went commercial, and you know, within months I was earning four figures and I was really on my way. So, you know, a couple things I, I really want to point out is, number one, I took the time to make my own plan. Super important. Number two, I then moved forward, and I didn't, I didn't focus so much on the money that I lost sight of the skills I needed to get. I needed to be able to drive traffic in order to get the money. So I didn't really focus on money, 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 which is, I, I think, kind of a, a syndrome of that, like, shiny object thing. It looks so bright. It's so easy. You're not sure. sure you know, you go forward. But instead, if you really focus on the skills that are needed, you're going to be in a, a, met, a much better mindset to set you up for the success that you're after. You know, I love that because our minds are our most valuable asset that we have. And so by nourishing and really building up our own personal education, it's the best thing that we can do for ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Yay! I love it. So... I think, um, David, I think he answered your question pretty good about what's in the book. Um, so going through, you know, I love how you outlined um, your book first. Um, so some people um, that works really well for and some people just sit down and write and see what comes out. So outlining it, um, you probably got it done a heck of a lot faster doing it that way than if you were to have just started writing, correct? Yeah, and, and one of the things that when I think about it, Natalie, is that when I got to that point where I was writing, like I knew it was going to be a physical book, there was going to be a lot of content, and I had created a lot of different courses on everything from SEO to WordPress to affiliate marketing, and I got really good at structuring and teaching people. In fact, I, I think that's really what I'm supposed to do on this earth is to teach and help people. And I found that it took me three products to figure this out, but you know, people don't want to know everything that you know on a certain subject. It's too much. It's completely overwhelming. And uh, Albert Einstein have, has a quote that I absolutely love. I use it in, in nearly all my presentations. And the, the quote is, is that everything should be as simple as possible, but no simpler. So when I started making courses on SEO, the first one, I had every detail that I knew and that I had learned over six or seven years, and it was too much. But by the time I got to the third uh, product that I uh, had published, I actually, instead of having all these different bullet points about SEO, I had a nine-step formula that made it really easy for people to move forward and get results. And in the same manner that I simplified the strategies, I would like to, I try to simplify the courses that I make. So the first course is always kind of like, you know, let's get excited. Let's get our mindset straight. Let's be excited about the opportunity. It's like an introduction. And then I go into, you know, item number one, and then item number two. And when I sat down to create this book, it wasn't so much just creating Trust Funnel. I was really creating a course, and it just happened to be, it could have been a PDF, but it's a physical book. So you'll actually see there's uh, homework at the end of a lot of chapters. It's like reminders, this is what's most important. And again, it, it's got a really good flow, and I think it, that flow stems from what I learned about teaching and just organizing uh, content and actually that's something that a lot of people have said I love the way you organize the book 
Well, of course, because you don't want to start, if you don't have a website, to me, that's really important. That's the thing that's always in your control. Nobody can take that away from you. You can build a list at your website. So let's get that going first. And then once that's up and running, maybe let's do YouTube or, or Facebook or self-publishing, and we can drive traffic back to the website. So that's how that flow developed. Well, I think it is a, a wonderful flow, and I love how you've really um, put it all together in a very cohesive way. Um, I know creating my first product, <laughs> it made me laugh because my first product, I wanted to put everything that I knew into this one thing, and, and my husband, Lee, was like, no, no, just do this little section of it. And my heart was like, no, I need to tell them everything that I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but going through um, developing courses for other people and other courses that I've developed myself, um, I've learned he was right. <laughs> and it is so much easier to digest when it's in just these small little chunks because taking six to seven years worth of knowledge and putting it into something that is you know, a 30-day course or however long it might take is incredibly overwhelming and consuming. Yeah, it just makes it easier. And my whole thing, again, is like I found I really like to do coaching programs. I stick with people for several months, and I take them from A to Z. And then, and then you know, the homework is just what's in front of us. We don't need to try to figure out everything. And I think that's something that people stumble with as well. It's like if they're going to do SEO, they're going to start asking me questions about link building, and we haven't even chose a domain. And it's like it's not necessary. I mean, we're going to get there. I got you. Stay cool, but let's just focus all our energy on coming up with a really good brand name. You know, a good brand name is super important, and you don't want to, like, screw that up. So instead of, like, having all this stuff flying around in your cranium, you know, break it down, chunk it down, and focus on what's in front of you. Yes, and by chunking it down and, and focusing on what's in front of you, you're able to just expand on that one little topic which makes it even more powerful absolutely indeed yes so um, David has um, sent in a comment that he thinks this is fantastic and a little bit about um, you know some marketing people have talked about other topics and they say that selling their um, their projects but nobody actually follows through with it so um, You've given people a way to be able to follow through and do the entire process in a step-by-step -step version, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, I've always tried to do that. I think it's it's one thing to tell people what to do, but when you tell and you show people. So, like, a great example is, let's just uh, share an example from the book, and the first thing that came to my mind was my anchor method. So I mentioned a bit ago about the importance of a, a powerful brand name and kind of let me share my thoughts with you and give me give me what you think Natalie because you know you're awesome at this you've been publishing for a long time you're there with Lee and the both of you are just totally dialed in you know one of the things that I learned about creating a brand and really selling anything online is that if people don't understand they're done I mean and, and of course if if someone's on a sales page or if someone's at a presentation and they're just saying, I'm a little overwhelmed, I'm not sure exactly how this all works, there's no way they're going to move forward. And our job as, as a marketer is to get people to move forward. Mm -hmm. You do it all day long. It's not just about selling, selling, selling. Visit my blog. Opt into my list. Share this content on Facebook. Um, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. So you're going to be asking people to move forward and do all kinds of things all the time. So if we know it's important that people understand, the thing we can do is we can start off and we can create a brand name that will help them to instantly get it. And it's funny, I didn't even think about this, but even the book is based on uh, the strategy I just mentioned called anchor anchor method. So I have anchor content, I have 
anchor method. And a new thing I'm, I've just figured out that I'll talk about one day in the future is anchor asset. So this is this book is an anchor asset. So if we go back to the anchor method, really what it is is it's combining two words. And one word is based on terminology that people in the chosen market that you're going to move forward on would understand. Natalie, if I say, hey, do you know what a sales funnel is? I would say yes. Right. Funnel. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great because if I create a product like push button SEO, people are going to know right away exactly what it's about. My elevator speech is already taken care of. Trust Funnel is the same way. People know this is about sales and marketing. Now, trust is kind of what I call the benefit anchor. And we hear about, you know, it's important to really lead with the benefits. What, a, what, a, what am I going to get by using this product? Not so much features, but a benefit. Well, if you build trust, you don't have to sell much at all because people are going to trust you. They're going to listen more uh, to what you have to say, and they're going to be much more likely to buy. So by including a word that's based on a benefit, then you can create a really cool brand name. So Trust Funnel is a great example of that. Marketing Easy Street is the name of my marketing blog. I've got the word marketing in there, and then Easy Street. It's like, hey, it doesn't need to be so complicated. So that's, you know, that's a great example of one of the examples that's in the book where I really try to show people step by step, you know, this is how I've done it. This is what I've learned. You can do this too. Now move forward <laughs> and get some great results. <laughs> you know, I wanted I want to go back just a little bit because you touched on something that uh, was actually kind of a hard lesson for me to learn, and I think it's a great lesson um, for people who are just starting out. Is that um, when you're first putting together your your product or your website or anything like that, it's um, you know, you just want to like inundate people with it, and there's so many options, there's so many choices because that's what's floating around up in your head. There's just all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you were to put something on your your web page where you list out five different things that people can go to all these different directions on stuff, um, they become confused, Absolutely. and a confused person will not buy. So if you, if you give somebody five different options for essentially the same results, um, you're not going to know which one to choose. I, I do the same thing. It's just, and then you yeah. just kind of throw up your hands and say, forget it. So you've lost your sale because you, haven't, you didn't hone in your message to make it one button instead of five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you ever been in uh, the supermarket and you're really excited for some ice cream? Yes. <laughs> and then how many choices are there? Yeah, there's like, I, there's a whole aisle. <laughs> it's a whole freaking aisle. I mean, I've lost like entire months of my life. It's like I must have ice cream, ice cream. It's like 11 o'clock at night. It's gonna, I'm going to watch this movie and eat my ice cream. And I'm standing there just all alone. <laughs> Well, I know. All I want is the coconut flavored <laughs> chocolate ice cream. And, and you know what the you know what the most popular flavor of ice cream is? Which one? Vanilla. <laughs> because it's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Vanilla. It's vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Well, I guess with vanilla, if you have the base of vanilla. You as the consumer, you can select your different topping that you want. So if you want to add chocolate one day and nuts the other day, you have the flexibility to do that. Exactly. Or you can just have it plain. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> it's wonderful. So it, it reminds me of something that I wrote about the other day. Um, and it goes, have you ever heard of um, decision points? That We only have so many decisions that we can make throughout the day um, before our brain basically gets fried. Uh, you... Well, kind of. What I've heard is about like information overload and how mm -hmm. there's that point of no return. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always, I see this uh, image, right? It's, it's, and it's kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Like it'd be my profile. 
and it would be this huge hose of information like coming straight into my <laughs> mouth and it's like and you just you can't handle it and your brain goes okay I'm totally done here uh, good luck mister but I'm done for the day yeah so when oh and it's so funny that you you talk about the hose it's like a fire hose like at your face but if you were to take it and give somebody a straw where it is um, consumable in one little you know one little squirt or whatever you know one little sip and it's satisfying and you get what you need from that one little straw you don't need the ginormous amounts of water well you know uh, and I, this is terrible. I just love to ask questions. It's just like my little game. So, like, <laughs> what's the most popular business book? If you like, if you had to name the most popular business book. Oh, I don't even know. Um, I can tell you some of my favorites. <laughs> okay, let me hear your favorite. That's pretty good. Um, my favorite one is um, Think and Grow Rich. That's the number one, baby. <laughs> is it? Well, it happens to be my favorite. <laughs> Okay, so you know what's really interesting about our two our two topics here is like we just kind of are trailing off of like information overload and decision points, and then the name of your favorite book is Think and Grow Rich, and one of the things that's paramount in Think and Grow Rich is you have to have a definite purpose. You have to know exactly what you're doing. Remember at the beginning of this uh, interview, we kind of talked a bit about. I decided for myself what was the exact thing I was going to do. I was excited, but at the same time, I was dead serious, and I was going to get serious. And I said SEO. So at that point, what my brain did is it thanked. It started to think. That sounds kind of silly, but the thing is, is your brain can't do anything for you if you don't know what you're, where you're going or what you're doing. It's just like, and that's why it's so easy to be distracted. But if you're on course, if you know exactly what you're doing, I'm writing a book. I need to focus and write every day. Or I'm going to build a website. That's my most important thing. Then your brain will guide you through the process and will help you make decisions because you've already figured it out. And that's why I think Napoleon Hill labeled his book, Think and Grow Rich, because it's a sad sad thing but most people if you say you know what is, what is the thing you're working on right now a lot of people they don't have an answer they're not sure they're trying to figure it out so I think it's so important you gotta come up with a plan and that's again I think you know why I love coaching programs so much is because when you pay you know hundreds of dollars and you get into a program that lasts three months and takes you from A to Z someone else has already done the thinking and they've created a curriculum that's based on proven results and they can walk you through and you know too it's not like you know someone just doing it for you you've got to be present but a lot of that's already been taken care of and, and you, it allows you to focus much more and I've had such amazing results because you know I've stuck with people and I pulled them through a three-month period and we get stuff done and it's it's awesome Yes, and, and it all revolves around that honed-in focus that you're doing with them. Yeah, just, hey, this is what we're doing, okay? We're going to publish. And let me give you a great example. La the last coaching I program I had was last year. And, and I was, do uh, you know, I've been doing great with, with Kindle. And I had been publishing books, and they were er generating lots of money. They were building my list. And, and that's what people want. But in order to get that, we've got to do this stuff. And so the first thing I said is, we've got about 500 people together. We were all going to move forward in this program. And the first thing I said, and Natalie, it was kind of scary. I said, okay, we're not going to think about marketing at all for 10 days or so. <laughs> and the reason we're not going to worry about it is because how many of you have published a book? And most of them hadn't. It's like, here's the thing. Marketing doesn't matter if we can't get to the point of publishing. So first off, I've got a super simple system that you can create to, to publish a book in a number of days. It'll be a quality book that you think about, that you put together, but it'll be based on images and more about descriptions than like thousands of words. I'll guide you through the process. I'll give you a simple software system to use to 
to do the formatting and if you just follow this simple outline you'll be able to publish and you know I told them that and I'm like oh geez I hope this goes well <laughs> you know, first thing I say is okay everybody forget about the money and they trusted me and what happened is lots of people published within days and they were ranking on Google and they were selling books and then as soon as they did that they were excited they had published they had some energy and then we started getting into the marketing and having those stepping stones is really really quite helpful oh, that's I love it it's wonderful because you can't start marketing something that you don't have yet and a lot of people don't finish it's sad but you know that's why you know my job as a coach is to help people along with systems that I know can get them to the finish line as quickly as possible but at the same time allow them to create an asset that will drive their business forward so you know I, I had taken the time I had spent a couple of years figuring out self-publishing and Kindle and it took me a while to come out with this method it was based on children's books not any kind of children's books nonfiction uh, because there's not a story involved it's easier it's more about research and you know what I had done was I thought about it I tried to come up with a system I did come up with a system and then people were able to implement a system that was proven and that is the power of a coaching program and that's and again I you know that's what is cool about something like this that's you know ten years of thinking about how to how to push forward and get results online and you can you know you can do it in three years or you can do it in three months and, and again the power of a coach yes and I can attest to that power of a coach I, I happen to live with one <laughs> Excellent. So I got lucky on that part but without that that help of somebody helping you through each step of the way um, and help you to not stay stuck or get stuck um, is invaluable. I, I can't even um, imagine how far I would not be without the help. Yeah, good stuff, absolutely. Yes. So, Brian, your website is marketingeasystreet.com. That's correct. And that's your marketing blog. And I have some other links where people can um, connect with you on Facebook. Uh, so we got facebook.com forward slash marketing easy street is your Facebook page. And I will, um, after we're done here, I'll put this up on a post and put all of your links down at the bottom. So that's awesome. And you know what, Natalie, just link to my personal profile because that's where I do most of my stuff anyway. Okay. I've kind of just transitioned over. You bet. <laughs> I love connecting with my personal profile too because um, Google changes all their or not Google um, Facebook changes all their algorithms so much that the personal profile is just better to connect it's with people. It's more powerful. It's easier to connect with a bigger group of people, right? So Absolutely. It's all about engagement. Mhm. Mm and trust. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, let's um, we're almost at the top of the hour. And so I want to see if anybody has any questions for you. Um, you know, if you have questions for Brian, go ahead and type them in the Q&A box wherever you are seeing them on your screen. And we'll see um, how we can get those answered for you. And um, David had put in a comment for you that um, just complimenting you that this is, you know, this is wonderful information. This is um you know people don't take action and it's a you know no wonder why people don't take action because of the confusion with everything so he is completely agreeing with uh, with everything we have to say on this as well oh well I'm glad that uh, David is, is digging the information you know the thing about it is that it's a lot of fun and it there's some work involved but it can be a ton of fun and I think sometimes you know people think a trust funnel very serious book doesn't mean you can't be yourself doesn't mean you can't like have fun and and be real and, and just be you and, and build something great and get great results. Mm. So we have a yes, I totally agree. We have a question that's came across. Um, okay. It says, Brian, do you use a psychology in coaching people? Um, it is a matter of psychology or to knowledge only to get the reach some people point in business. So basically, I think David is asking is 
do you use psychology more in your coaching programs or do you use the power of information? Uh, both. Like I said, you know, in the, earlier I kind of mentioned how I started learning about teaching people and leading people and coaching. And that started off with a simple digital product. It was like, it was one product, there was no upsell. And it, after about two to three years, I started coaching people. And a coaching program is a little different than just a digital product. Um, it, it takes place over a period of time. There's a beginning and there's an end. And then in points in the middle, you know, we get together and we get to move forward and take people through the steps in the course. And at the very beginning, what I like to do is I, and just as I did in the book here, is I talk about mindset. And I talk about, you know, I, in fact, in the book, I talk about this, this story, uh, Natalie. And it's a pisser, you know. It's like I had uh, been online for five years. I was very successful. I was making six figures as an affiliate marketer. I was selling thousands of Halloween costumes. I was making thousands of dollars with AdSense. And I was invited to fly down to Florida to hang out with some guys and we were going to have our own mastermind. And I got there, and long story short, you know, we spent the first day doing the Orlando thing, and we were waiting for people to fly in. And I, I kept, you know, starting to talk about marketing because that's why I was there. I wasn't there to eat at the Rainforest Cafe, and uh, I could do that anywhere in the United States. And one of the guys said, you know, we can't talk about the marketing yet because it's so super secret. And I thought, these guys are kind of goofy. <laughs> and the first day the, the mastermind began, they actually told me, you're not invited. I'm sorry, but, you know, you're going into the Internet marketing space. And what the information we have here is so super secret, we can't uh, let that information out. And there might be a breach. You might share it with other people. And I was just totally floored. I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy. I like hanging out with people. And it was like the first time I ever went out to hang out with marketers, I spent money on a hotel, I flew all the way down to Orlando, and then they kind of told me that we don't like you, we're kicking you out, we don't trust you, and it, it sucked, and it sucked bad, and it's like, I think a lot of people think in, in internet marketing, it's always, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis, and everything's perfect, and it's so easy, and you're going to make all this money, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I try to share with people, you know, what it's really like. I share struggles I've been through. I share the psychology, like I said, which is in chapter two. It's like the mindset. Just to really get people prepared for where they're going, to try to center them. You know, what is your objective? What's the most important thing? What's your productivity ritual? So that I cover I cover both of those things. Wonderful. Wow. <laughs> what a powerful story behind that. Um, you know, and it, it was it was too bad because as I was leaving, I basically, I said to everyone, I said, here's the thing, you know, right now you're envisioning, envisioning this glass is half empty. You know, it's like there's only half left. It's like you could go and think about it as, wow, I still have half of my sparkling water. That's awesome. And if you kick me out, that will be it. The bridge will be burned and we'll be done. And I said, right now you're thinking about all the stuff you could lose if I were to share some of your super secret information. But you're not focused on what you could gain if I were to stay. Mm -hmm. And I said, the thing I want to let you know is uh, I'm going to be pretty successful. I just, it's how I, I'm just hardwired to get results. I'm not going to give up. I'm already doing super well. So by you kicking me out, you know, there might be some a lot of neat things I could bring to the table. And they said, no, nah, no, nah, you'll never make it. It's really hard. And a year and a half later, I was back in Orlando in front of 150 people sharing my strategies about SEO, teaching, leading, doing all the things I said I was going to do. And, you know, it's too bad that they had that viewpoint. So yeah. it's like it sucked, but, you know, I think they kind of made their own bed and, and I got over it and, and you proved him wrong. Well, you know, at, at, at first I was kind of like, gosh, I don't know if I want to tell that story. The story that story is in this book in Chapter 2. and I don't want to, like, you know, hurt someone's feelings. But someone said to me, you know, sometimes 
the truth is is hard to swallow, and sometimes people behave badly, and it's like that's not on you, that that's on them, you know. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Well. We are now at the top of the hour, so Brian, I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this fabulous information. Um, awesome. Author of Trust Funnel. Um, it's officially launched on February 3rd, correct? You got it. And But if you want to pre-order it, or order it now, you can. You can get a copy of it. Um, but if you wait till February 3rd, there are some, some special stuff coming up. Yeah, so the way it works is the Kindle version is available. Okay. So if people want to buy the Kindle version, I think it right now it's seven ninety nine. However, like I said, if they wait another couple months, they'll be able to get the paperback, they'll get the Kindle version for free, and they'll also get a free uh, chapter, a free case study, and some more good, uh, some more extra awesome trust funnel goodness. So either way, I don't think you can really go wrong, but you can't get the, the physical version is not available. So literally, I just made a video, Natalie, and I made kind of a goofy video about how I'm trying to send all the books that I sell out of, of my home, just me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'm driving, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> so anyway, I worked on that this morning, and uh, that's what's going to happen on February 3rd. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all of your wonderful knowledge and information with us. And um, if you already have Trust Funnel or want to grab it and, and dive into it, go ahead and grab it and, um, and read it with me. Awesome. Natalie, thank you so much. <laughs> thank um, you. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate this opportunity. So thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, guys. Well, have a great writing date day and be productive. And if you're working on a new book or you have a new book idea in your head, then maybe try what Brian has talked about and write your table of contents first like that. Works pretty good. Yeah. And, you know, take your writing date time and flesh out the table of contents and figure out what it is that you want to talk about in your next book. So talk to you guys next month. Remember that every we have these every Saturday, every first Saturday of the month at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So be sure to, to be on the lookout for the next email that comes out. If you're not on the email list, go to writingdate.com and you can sign up there so that you can get the notifications for all the wonderful hangouts that we do and come hang out with us. So thanks, Brian, and thanks, everyone, for coming on. And Talk with you next month.